Jansi says it takes a lot of time and effort. How are you going to do it? To which our Sophie has an answer. She says, "I'll be a manager. I'll work as a manager. I'll acquire money." She thinks that how does he not know that everything important or secret stuff like this? I would obviously tell him because I trust him. Why would I go and tell it to dad and then come to him? The daughter Sophie, she just notices that the kitchen is filled with father, little Derek, and mother. Not just that, there's something else also. It's just a small room filled with steam. Hello and a warm welcome to your prep school English classes. I am your English teacher Kshama. Today in this session, we are going to take up this eighth chapter from your textbook Flamingo, named as Going Places by A. R. Barton. Where are we going? Which is the place that we are going to, or who is going to a place? What is it about? We are going to discover in this session. In this session, we have to discuss about the author, of course, who is the writer, and what is the background of the story, who are the characters in the story. and then we are going to summarize the entire lesson the events that have happened in the lesson and will recap it at the end now without wasting much time i have a couple of questions for you as always now are you a fan boy or fan girl of someone it could be a star it could be somebody you idolized right are you a fan girl or a fan boy now what do you think you'll do if you ever get to meet your idol what do you think your response would be then have you dreams or the thoughts that you had when you were young dream something that you wanted to do when you grow up has it changed or transformed as you have you know grown right now has it transformed is there a change that you notice then what's the riskiest place you can think of putting yourself to just to get an autograph from your celebrity uh, you know idol or somebody like that somebody very famous or somebody that you genuinely want an autograph from what is the riskiest place you can think of putting yourself that's what i want you to think of these are the things keep it in mind then moving forward to the author of this particular lesson we have ar barton the full name is anthony richard henry barton now uh, what do we know about him he is an english royal air force officer he has served as an officer and he has taken part in the battle of britain and he has also been awarded the distinguished flying cross dfc He has taken part in the Battle of Britain and has been awarded as the Distinguished Flying Cross (DFC). Also, he died on 4th April 1943 while he was trying to make an emergency landing. He expired. Then, Barton is buried at St Andrew's Church in Totteridge. That is where he is buried. That's what we know about Anthony Richard Henry Barton. Okay, what has he written in this particular lesson is a mystery for us. Where is the place? Who is going to the place? Let's find out. Okay, in this particular lesson, when it opens, we see two girls walking hand in hand. They are actually coming from school. They are on the way to home. Okay, they are uh, with linked arms. They are walking towards the house, and all of a sudden, uh, one girl over here. There are two girls. Uh, as I said, there is Sophie and there is Jansi. Now, Sophie says, "You know what I want to do? I want to start a boutique." I want to buy a boutique and I want to start a boutique. That's what she says. Jansi is surprised. Where did it come from? Out of the blue, she says, "Bro, it requires a lot of money. It requires a lot of effort to open a boutique altogether. How will you manage it?" That's what she says. Now, Sophie, uh, Jansi are the two girls who are walking hand in hand, side by side with each other. They are moving from school to home. That's one thing we got to know. After that, Sophie says, "I am going to have a boutique when I am out of this school." But then. Who says Jansi says it takes a lot of time and effort how are you going to do it to which our Sophie has an answer she says I'll be a manager I'll work as a manager I'll acquire money but Jansi says you know they won't take you right away to be a manager it requires a lot of skill and stuff okay now uh, she has pictureized it already how her boutique will look and how she is going to make money everything but Jansi says they are not going to hire you as a manager once and for all that's not going to happen she says I am going to be a natural like mary quant she is a british fashion designer like mary quant i am going to be naturally skilled in it that's what she says over here and then that is what sophie says okay she says i am a natural i am born to do this and i am skilled i am going to handle it don't worry but after that jansi is actually sad they had both actually reserved a fund in order to start a biscuit factory Now if Sophie goes on her own way what will happen to Jansi she can't start a biscuit factory all by herself right so she is little sad about it later she says maybe i can be an actress as well actresses have get a lot of money right so uh, in the sideline i'll start my boutique as well that's what uh, her plan is an actress will get real money i'll make money 
This is said by Sophie. She says, I'll be an actress. That also will fetch me a lot of money. Then boutique on the sideline. That business will be on the sideline. Then, or I can also be a fashion designer. She, uh, as you can see, wants to be something more sophisticated, something classy, a manager, a fashion designer, or uh, an actress. She is thinking of becoming something sophisticated. Now, it is told that the two girls are in their adolescence, wherein uh, Jansi wants to start up her own biscuit factory, but along with Sophie. But Sophie, on the other hand, is thinking of the n number of options that she could do, but she wants it to be sophisticated. It could be becoming a manager, actress, or, you know, being a fashion designer for that matter. It's the adolescence uh, fantasies that might turn into reality or might not. It's the beginning of it all. Okay, then what happens? She reaches home. After reaching home, she actually says, I'm going to have one day if I have money, I am going to have a boutique. That's enough. That's done. Okay, but her father says, who is scooping the shepherd's pie and is having the shepherd's pie. He says, you know, if you ever have money, for God's sake, just buy a neat house that we can all live in. Buy a house, not a boutique, he says. Then uh, there is little Derek, who is her brother. He also adds on to what dad is saying and says, and says, she thinks money grows on the tree, isn't it? That's what she thinks. Money will come easily is what she thinks, isn't it? Little Derek adds. But the mother who is actually, you know, she's uh, bending and doing something in the sink. She doesn't say anything. The daughter, Sophie, she just notices that the kitchen is filled with father, little Derek and mother. Not just that. There's something else also. It's a, a small room filled with steam. There's a lot of uh, pile of dirty dishes that she sees and this all of a sudden and also the denial of the fact that she can't have boutique but to have a house, it all suddenly gives a tightening feeling in her throat and she wanted to get out of the kitchen and find her brother Joff. Now Joff, where is Joff? He is actually working with the parts of his bicycle. He's actually tinkering them, doing something with them and he, she goes on to find him. Sophie goes on to find her brother Joff. That is the next character that we are introduced to. Now, this guy, uh, it has been three years that he is out of the school and he is working as an apprentice mechanic, okay? Then he is the mysterious introvert kind. Whereas Sophie is all like uh, in her own la-la land, dreaming, wants to be a lot of stuff, talks about it, tells about it to everybody. We can clearly make it out that she is an extrovert type. But her brother is an introvert type. He comes out to be very mysterious, okay? There's, he, she feels like... There's literally nothing that I know about my brother. I don't know who are the exotic people that he meets. I don't know if they can be also interesting. I don't know the places that he visits. He doesn't talk about anything. Okay, that's why she doesn't know about it. Said little and hence she knew nothing about him. That's what we know about Chof. But she had a weird sense of, you know, attraction towards this mysterious nature of her brother. Like, how is it that he doesn't say anything? She wanted to know about it one day. Okay, so she was jealous of his silence. The fact that he did not say anything. Where is he going? Who is he meeting? Talking to? Nothing. So she wanted to be admitted by him in a more affectionate way. She wanted him to have more trust in her and, you know, share things with her. She wanted her their bond to be stronger and more affectionate so that her brother tells everything. Or also, uh, as a matter of fact, might take her somewhere wherever that he is going, might make her meet people also. But her father, on the other hand, actually had forbidden her to go to uh, any of the places. She was a girl and she was not allowed to go to every other random place. Her brother also did not say anything. He did not add anything to it. He also did not contradict or uh, he did not say, I will take her. Okay. Maybe she thought Joff also thought about me as being impatient and impulsive. Maybe that is what he thinks of me. Right. She, which is what Sophie thinks. Maybe Joff thinks I'm impatient and I'm young to do uh, anything. But to her, her world was like, she felt like she understood everything. Although in adolescence, she felt like the world, even if I go out there, there is a lot that I need to explore. She is so naive that she feels like it will be just like my home only. Whatever that I'm feeling, the safety and the comfort that I'm feeling in the house, I will feel the same way even when I go out there in the world. That's not true in reality, right? The world out there might turn out to be cruel and harsh. There are unexpected twists and turns, right? Now over here, you understand how naive she was. There's a lot I need to discover. I know the world is waiting for me. It will be as safe and comforting as my home as well. That's what she thinks. Then, 
she also sees herself you know one day if joff and i are you know closer as brother and sister he would take me on a horse i'll be riding behind him he will be uh, in his black shining new leather uh, pants and stuff and i will be wearing a yellow frock along with the cape that will be flowing in the air they we will be hearing uh, you know sounds of applause the world cheering for us because we are going out there as brother and sister in order to discover interesting people and interesting places that's what she imagines herself to be doing that's the uh, adolescent fantasy that she has moving forward what is the crux of the story let's come to the main event she goes to uh, joff and starts talking to him and says something she reveals something what is that something she says i met danny casey the famous footballer danny casey yes exactly i met him joff is surprised yes where i don't believe you no that did not happen he says it's not true did you tell dad she says no she thinks that how does he not know that everything important or secret stuff like this i would obviously tell him because i trust him why would i go and tell it to dad and then come to him he doesn't know that simple fact okay then she explains as to how it happened now that the brother is not trusting her she had to explain how it happened so she says i was looking at the clothes at the roy's window this shop and then i suddenly felt like there was somebody standing next to me when i looked it was danny cassie and i asked him excuse me are you danny cassie the famous footballer and he agreed he said yes that's what happened she explains it to him so he asks then describe his looks she's like you have obviously seen him and you know how he looks but no he says give me the details how does he look if you have seen him so closely then give me the details then she goes on to giving him the details he has green gentle eyes and he is not as tall as you all think of him he is not that tall then she actually tries to talk about or thinks if she can talk about his teeth and then anyway let's not talk about it he just tells him he has green gentle eyes and he is not that uh, tall as you all think of him later on dad is back uh, he has washed his face and, and he is fresh and he comes he sits on the couch and moves uh, little derek's shoes aside but right when he is doing that joff comes and tells uh, you know dad who uh, sophie met today she met danny cassie that's what she says so but we i don't believe it dad also doesn't believe it he is in disdain he also disagrees with it and he is not at all giving a penny to the fact that she has you know met danny cassie the famous football then he joff tells it to the father the dad dad doesn't believe it either then i knew a man who knew tom finney he then goes on to talk about how he also knows a man who you know once knew tom finney and then they all start talking about how casey needs to be more focused in his game and avoid distractions but then sophie is like no 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 that's not the part where you need to concentrate on he told me that he is about to buy a shop about to buy a boutique specifically then dad again tells who told you that she says he himself told me that okay then after that uh, the father tells her that one day you know girl you are going to put yourself in trouble in all this you know uh, dreamy land that you have construct in your head you are going to put yourself into trouble and he disagrees with what she is saying later on she again tries to describe how it all happened once again narrate the story to joff and she explains how he came stood there she was about to ask him for a an autograph for her brother little derek you know me and my brothers we usually like it is a pilgrimage it is a routine for us to uh, go to the match every day and we all see you we all love you she says can you give me an autograph for my brothers it would be great but both of them didn't have pen or a paper that is when she thought that be a loss if you can't give me an autograph but then he tells her if she can you know afford to meet him the next week or the uh, in a, uh, one of the upcoming days she was surprised but then she also agrees now joff doesn't believe all of this he would have said that to many number of girls that he had met that he would give them the autograph he has told that to you as well but then she doesn't approve she says no 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 he is a quiet gentleman he only told that to me he is about to meet me and he is about to give me the autograph she is sure about it oh in your dreams you must be dreaming he will not do that and he storms out of the room joff doesn't believe it and he storms out of the room so uh, she tells him about how uh, you know saturday they go there and they watch them all the time now it is actual point where they went to the match on one saturday it's a weekly routine so they go little derek uh, sophie brother and father they all sit near the goal but our joff over here moves high up with his friends he is not sitting with them along with them sophie father and little derek are near the goal and then joff went with his mates 
the united team it won and kc drove in for the second goal he is the one who did the second goal uh, the score was 2 and nil and sophie was really proud she was like this you know what this is what i was talking about and you know what i have met that guy and he is about to give me the autograph next week she was so proud of him okay then jan c her friend had got to know about it joff went and told frank frank is none other than jan c's brother so he has actually told jansi about it jansi was like how do i not know about it and you know about it she is my friend she did not tell me but then jansi is somebody it's not a matter for her she would she is like the bbc she would go around broadcasting it to everybody that's the reason so if he had not told her about it but then she also thought how can joff do this to me why did he tell her that he could have kept it as a secret i told him because i wanted him to keep it as a secret and i trusted him why did he do it but then she also finds out that he has not exactly told on which day or where they are meeting and stuff so she actually tries to tells her the surface level story it was nothing he didn't have a pen so he did not give me an autograph that's all the story is ended there and then jansi tells you know that you can trust me right you can tell me the whole story of what has happened no no this is what has happened uh, just make sure not to tell it anywhere because if dad gets to know that i'm going around talking about it he won't be happy about it and you know how uh, angry mom gets so don't talk about it she asks jansi to keep quiet later on now will sophie go and you know meet this idol dan uh, danny kesi will she meet him will she get an autograph uh, for, from him will he come let's see now there is a place where which she often played as a child she goes there as it was dark getting dark she goes there alone it is risky to go alone for a young girl like that or for any uh, person for that matter young person be it a guy or a girl going alone is risky right but then she goes there is a wooden bench uh, on which she sits and waits for dani kasi to arrive when she is sitting over there she actually thinks of you know how he would come and she starts imagining all of that in her head how exciting it would be how excited she would get at the very sight of looking at him everything she starts imagining in her head but not only that on the other side she also thought what if she he doesn't come what if he doesn't arrive and he she tried to balance her thoughts with the idea of what would i do if he comes what would i do if he does not arrive okay that's how she was balancing her thoughts she imagined him coming and him not coming both of them try to balance it with the idea of not coming then so at last after her waiting for so long dani kesi did not arrive now she believed it so strongly whatever the interaction they had and everything she was like dani and i know how it was how we talked and what we talked he was about to give me the autograph but there was no pen and paper so he asked me to meet i know about it but how will i prove the others wrong those who are not believing me be it you know father joff little derek jansi nobody is believing me how will i prove them wrong there was nothing no clue or no proof for them to be proven wrong then she pictured him one more time she pictured the entire scene one more time where she was looking at the clothes uh, outside the roy's window and then she felt somebody standing next to her which was none other than dani kasi and she actually asked him excuse me aren't you dani kasi and then he was like yeah yes i am and then when he was about to give an autograph there was no pen or paper so he asked her to meet that is exactly what had happened she pictured it again and again and again right but then at the end she consoled herself yes it is the same guy but he was no taller than everybody expects him to be and he was not as bold as you were he did not arrive later on she went from there she passed through a pub where her father's uh, bicycle was parked and she was happy to know that father won't be there when she goes home and she returned home she couldn't you know she was frustrated at the fact that i have to go and face joff who did not believe me he still won't believe me because i don't have any proof now later on it was again last saturday as their pilgrimage as their routine goes they went to the match uh they saw dani kasi playing and then the crowd roaring at the fact that the uh, you know they were winning the match she saw that she heard that and it was the same regular routine again now that is what our chapter going places that is where we went we went to an event that happened in sophie's life and uh, how people around her did not believe it her you know encounter with her idol or the one who she is a fan of but then she was not able to get autograph from him somehow she put herself in a risky place of getting the autograph from him at night she waited for him he did not arrive so she had to come back home disappointed 
Okay, that's what the story was about. In a naive La La Land is our Sophie, who is, you know, after her encounter with Dani Cassie, the famous footballer, thinks that I will also buy a boutique shop. But her friend Jansi is not really happy about it. She tries to convince her but fails. Sophie wants to be something very sophisticated. It could be a manager, a fashion designer or an actress perhaps. Then, when she comes home and expresses the same, her father says, buy a house. That will be more uh, important for us. Little brother adds, she thinks money grows on the tree, doesn't it, daddy? Then uh, she has a special fascination to know about unknown, which is her mysterious natured brother. He doesn't say anything. He doesn't speak much. Uh, and she doesn't know uh, the interesting exotic places that he goes to, people that he meets. And she wants to know about it. She wants the bond between uh, her brother and herself to be more stronger and affectionate. And then she reveals how she met Dani Cassie to her family and her brother. But none of them believe her. Then they go to see the match where Dani Cassie wins. And Sophie is really proud about it. Her brother Joff tells her, do you really think he would come? But then she goes and waits for him in the park or the place that uh, was, you know, that they had decided on and he doesn't arrive. She sits there imagining, you know, him coming or balancing the ideas between him not coming as well. And finally, he doesn't arrive at all. So that's an utter disappointment with which she returns home. Tell me what is the part of the story that you enjoyed a lot. Uh, tell me about what you thought about the naive nature of this girl over here who maybe have, might have dreamt of, you know, meeting Dani Cassie or might have met him actually. But then going on to risking yourself to meet him or to get an autograph is such a bold thing, uh, yet foolish at times as you can consider it. Tell me what you thought about it and we'll discuss about it in the classes that we're about to meet in. On that note, I'll see you all in the next class. Thank you.